In the last video, we looked at uh, bridge rectifiers and half-wave rectifiers, uh, showing how you convert AC to DC. In this video, we're going to look at uh, switch mode power supplies, how they work. And here is a generic uh, switch mode power supply. Um, it's just showing you the very basic building blocks. Uh, there's a lot more control circuitry than what's here. Uh, but for basics, we just keep it what we have here. Our input, as usual on all power supplies, would be protected by a fuse, and I've shown it in this diagram. And this here is an AC uh, voltage uh, that changes from negative to positive. The bridge rectifier then rectifies it, and you have a, a DC direct current uh, voltage here across this smoothing capacitor, roughly about 385 volts DC. It would come here, down here to the mains transformer, sorry, the switch mode power supply transformer, and the voltage would go through this coil and go onto the collector of this switching transistor, Q1. We have a control system here. It normally consists of an IC and some passive components, resistors, capacitors, diodes, uh, along with the control IC. And you would have a drive voltage coming out here onto the base of this transistor. When this tr transistor here is low, no current flows through this circuit. When this transistor switches to high, this point here shorts to ground, which is the zero volts here. Now current flows through this uh, coil in this primary side of the transformer. And this builds up a magnetic field in this coil. Then when this transistor switches off, that current collapses and that magnetic field collapses, which induces a voltage in the secondary side of this transformer. And like the bridge rectifiers over here, we got two diodes here to rectify this AC voltage that is going to be uh, on this secondary side of the uh, of the power supply. You got this diode. You would have an AC waveform coming out here. Current will only flow in this direction, and then this capacitor here smooths it out. The bottom end of this capacitor is connected to zero volts or ground. Now this ground here is uh, zero volts on the secondary side. It's not physically connected to this zero volts here on the primary side. These are isolated. They physically don't touch. This diode here also has the same. Um, it, it, uh, the current only flows one th way through it. It rectifies it. And to get rid of any uh, ripple, this capacitor here stores uh, a charge and the lower end of the uh, capacitor is connected to ground on the secondary side. This uh, power supply shows 12 volts and 5 volts, which is a typical power supply that you would see possibly in a computer. This switching waveform here, the rate that this uh, transistor switches uh, can be over um, 100 kilohertz, that's um, 100,000 hertz. Uh, uh, per second. Um, it's very fast. And one of the reasons to use this fast switching is to reduce the size of these transformers and the components. If we only use 50 Hz, which is the main frequency, the transformer would be very large. Um, maybe some people would be able to remember some old audio hi-fi systems if you open up the big heavy transformer in it. Um, these would uh, have a lot more power output than them, and they, they wouldn't be as heavy as them. This voltage on the secondary side has to be controlled, has to be regulated somehow. Uh, it could, can't be let the, to uh, run freely. So what they have is some kind of feedback. They normally take the, uh, the highest voltage uh, of the power supply and feed uh, a portion of that back to a feedback circuit. Now this feedback circuit could, uh, is normally um, 
uh, an optocoupler. Now, an optocoupler uh, is basically an LED inside a package and um, a photosensitive diode on the other side. When this voltage here on the secondary side uh, increases, the light output of this increases and this photodiode detects that and it sends that uh, uh, voltage back to this control circuit. Then this control circuit either reduces or increases the pulse width of these uh, these um, the drive uh, for the drive transistor. To get this power supply up and running, there is normally a startup circuit of some sort, and I'm showing here uh, three resistors. They're normally three very high value resistors, uh, over one mega one each, possibly. I've seen them higher, I've seen them even 10 meg, and you would have a voltage appear here at this one of the pins of the control IC. If this capacitor here was got a low in value, uh, this power supply would not start up, or if one of these resistors, start up resistors, uh, went high in value, it would not start up either. Um, most power supplies, however, also have a feedback from another small little winding, an extra winding, on the primary side of the uh, transformer, and it feeds back one of them, and there's a diode, and it attaches, say, to here, this spot here. Now it gets its supply from itself. This would here be only used for startup purposes only.